The five families are New York City's five major organized crime syndicates in the Italian-American Mafia. Their structure dates to 1931, when a Sicilian mob figure named Salvatore Maranzano formerly organized warring factions of Italian-American criminals into five family groups with demarcated territories and a hierarchical structure. Each of the five families report to a ruling commission, the mafia's governing body that mediates disputes among the families. In The Godfather, the five families are the Corleone, Tattaglia, Barzini, Cuneo, and Stracci families. After the five families' war, only the Corleone family remained in a position of power, the other families were given over to lesser men who quickly sued for peace. Don Barzini, I want to thank you for helping me organize this meeting here today. And also the other heads of the five families of New York and New Jersey. <coughs> Carmine Cuneo from the Bronx and uh, from Brooklyn. <coughs> Philip Tatalia <coughs> from Staten Island. We have with us... Uh, Victor Strachey and all the other associates who came as far as from California, Kansas City, and all the other territories of the country. Thank you. How did things ever get so far? I don't know. It was so unfortunate, so unnecessary. I lost the son. I lost the son. We're quits. And if the tally agrees, then I'm willing to let things go on the way they were before. We are all grateful to Don Corleone for calling this meeting. We all know him as a man of his word. A modest man. He'll always listen to reason. Yes, Don Barzini. He's too modest. He had all the judges and politicians in his pocket. He refused to share them. When, when did I ever refuse an accommodation? All of you know me here. When did I ever refuse, except one time? And why? Because I believe this drug business is going to destroy us in the years to come. I mean, it's not like gambling or... Uh, Liquor, even women, which is something that most people want nowadays and is uh, forbidden to them by the pets and avanti of the church. Even the police departments that have helped us in the past with uh, gambling and other things are going to refuse to help us when it comes to narcotics. And I believed that then, and I believe that now. Times have changed. It's not like the old days where we can do anything we want. A refusal is not the act of a friend. If Don Corleone had all the judges and the politicians in New York, then he must share them. All he loved is use them. He must let us draw the water from the well. Certainly he can present a bill for such services. After all, we are not communists. <laughs> I also don't believe in drugs. For years I paid my people extra so they wouldn't do that kind of business. Somebody comes to them and says, I have powders. If you put up three, four thousand dollar investment, we can make fifty thousand distributing. So they can't resist. I want to control it as a business to keep it respectable. I don't want it near schools. I don't want it sold to children. That's an infamia. In my city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people, to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them lose their souls. I hope that we could come here and reason together. And as a reasonable man, I'm willing to do whatever's necessary to find a peaceful solution to these problems. Then we are agreed. The traffic in drugs will be permitted, but controlled. And Don Corleone will give her protection in the East, and there will be the peace. But I must have strict assurance from Corleone. 
As time goes by and his position becomes stronger, will he attempt any individual vendetta? Look, we are all reasonable men here. We don't have to give assurances as if we were lawyers. You talk about vengeance. Is vengeance going to bring your son back to you? Or my boy to me? I forgot the vengeance of my son. But I have selfish reasons. My younger son was forced to leave this country because of this Sonotso business. All right, I have to make arrangements to bring him back here safely, clear of all these false charges. But I'm a superstitious man. And if some unlucky accident should befall him, if he should get shot in the head by a police officer, or if he should hang himself in his jail cell, or if he's struck by a bolt of lightning, then I'm going to blame some of the people in this room. And then I do not forgive. But that aside, Let me say that I swear on the souls of my grandchildren that I will not be the one to break the peace we've made here today.